Saudi Arabia runs on two fluids, water and oil. Oil is considered by many to be the country's most important natural resource. However, for the Saudis themselves, water is becoming increasingly valuable. Oil revenues are rising, enabling skyscrapers to be built at tremendous speed. But water supplies are steadily declining. As it turns out, they are finite. The end is near and poses a threat to the very existence of the Desert Kingdom. The main source of fresh water on the peninsula is the Arabian Aquifer, formed 20,000 years ago when the climate in this area was much more humid. This is one of the world's largest aquifers, with the water lying at a depth of 100 to 500 and sometimes 2,500 meters. An aquifer is a thickness of permeable, water-saturated sediments that are similar in composition and have a layer-like occurrence. When the aquifer reaches the surface, various springs as well as sources are formed. Aquifers are the custodians of groundwater resources. Saudi Arabia is a desert country with no permanent rivers and lakes and very little rainfall. Aquifers are the main source of water here. Groundwater in deep sandstone aquifers is non-renewable or fossil water. Deep mountain aquifers are of sedimentary origin, typically sandstone and limestone extending over thousands of square kilometers with little natural recharge. Among these aquifers, the main ones are Sak, Wajid, Tabuk, Minjur, and Dorma. Wasiya Biyad, Um Erratuma, and Damam Neogene. Since the 1970s, the government has made important efforts to map such aquifers so that wells can then be drilled for urban and agricultural use. When intensive modern agriculture began in Saudi Arabia in the mid-1980s, there was a huge amount of water under the desert, 120 cubic miles or 500 cubic kilometers. This would be enough to fill, for example, Lake Erie in the United States. But in recent years, up to 5 cubic miles or 21 cubic kilometers of this water has been pumped to the surface every year for farm use. Based on volumes of production, the Saudis have already used up at least 96 cubic miles or 400 cubic kilometers of their aquifers. Experts estimate that four-fifths of Saudis' fossil water is gone. This means that one of the largest and oldest freshwater reserves on the planet, in one of the hottest and driest places, has been virtually emptied in just over a generation. Why did this happen? From an aerial view, the landscape of Saudi Arabia is dotted with greenery. These are farm fields that appeared in the desert thanks to irrigation. Huge buildings nearby are homes to tens of thousands of dairy cows whose needs for water and cooling are enormous. Until recently, the water to perform these miracles was thoughtlessly pumped deep from under the surface. The country decided to feed itself rather than import products from other countries. However, this decision as it turned out had disastrous consequences. In the mid-1980s, Saudi Arabia embarked on an ambitious agricultural plan to grow crops in its desert regions using ancient fossil water. Central irrigation systems have been installed in the barren Wadi Ashiran Basin in the northwestern part of the country. Water that had been buried deep underground for thousands of years was now used to grow fruits, vegetables, and wheat. Landowners were allowed to freely extract water from aquifers without restrictions to maintain irrigated fields in the desert. To make matters worse, 35% of agricultural land was irrigated by traditional flooding which uses more water than drip irrigation or sprinkler systems. This resulted in an average of 5 trillion gallons of water being pumped annually by the 1990s, enough to drain Lake Erie in just 25 years. The Deputy Minister of Agriculture for Research and Development of Saudi Arabia said, Agricultural practices in our country are the largest consumers of water, absorbing 85 to 90 percent of its volume. Of these, almost 80 to 85 percent is in underground aquifers. This ill-conceived scheme to turn the desert into wheat fields and blooming gardens had serious consequences. But still, that's not all. In Saudi Arabia, high levels of private consumption have exacerbated the problem of shrinking water supplies. Urbanization and improved lifestyles have led people to use more water while doing their normal activities. In fact, the average daily per capita water consumption in Saudi Arabia was 266 liters per day, or 96.8 cubic meters per year, twice the average for citizens of the European Union. 
Water resources were depleted not only at the individual level. The country's economy also has a growing water demand. Industrial water consumption is growing at 7.5% per year and should increase by 50% by 2032. Another issue was weak institutional capacity and governance, reflecting the general characteristics of the public sector in Saudi Arabia. Experts raise the alarm. Overuse, demographic and economic pressure could push Saudi Arabia's water supply to its limit. According to their estimates, natural water resources in some parts of the country are in danger of disappearing over the next 20 years. As we said, the trouble is that the water in the aquifers of Saudi Arabia is not being replenished. The rainfall here averages between 100 and 200 millimeters per year, making groundwater in the area a non-renewable resource. When hydrologists predicted in 2008 that it would take 50 years for groundwater to be pumped out, domestic wheat production had to stop. To avoid food shortages, the Saudi Agricultural and Livestock Investment Company was established in 2011 to secure food supplies with funds equivalent to 800 million US dollars. The company invested in the Canadian Wheat Board, which meant that some of the Canadian grain would be sent to Saudi Arabia. In addition to Canada, Australia and Brazil have become priority areas for investment in various grains and red meats. The Saudi government has decided to rely almost entirely on imported crops to feed its population of 30 million people. Outsourcing food production to countries such as Sudan and Ukraine, as well as others in South America and Asia, has helped Saudi Arabia grow its own food for export back to the kingdom. Local farmers were encouraged to engage in alternative agricultural activities such as growing fruits and vegetables in greenhouses using advanced drip irrigation methods. By 2014, Saudi Arabia's agricultural imports from the United States rose to an all-time high. In fact, this country is actually importing water supplies from the US in the form of food. But this did not fully solve the problem of water. The kingdom's government has attracted investments in seawater desalination, water distribution, sewerage and wastewater treatment. By 2014, about 50% of drinking water came from desalination, 40% from the extraction of non-renewable groundwater, and only 10% from surface water in the mountainous southwest of the country. The capital Riyadh was supplied with desalinated water pumped from the Persian Gulf over a distance of 467 kilometers. Water was provided to household consumers almost free of charge. But despite these improvements, the quality of services remained poor. Only a few cities had permanent water supply. In Riyadh, for instance, water was available only once every 2.5 days, and in Jeddah, only every 9 days. In 2019, Saudi Arabia launched a national program called Katra, which means droplet in Arabic. Under this program, the country intends to reduce water consumption by about 43% to 150 liters per capita per day by the year 2030. The droplet is designed to encourage an individual culture of water consumption. What is more, the program rationalizes water resources to best protect natural resources and all aspects of life that depend on it. The move proved to be very successful. Today in 2022, Saudi Arabia ranks second only to the United States and Canada in terms of water consumption per capita. Saudi Arabia is a prime example of how poor water management can have serious consequences for the water sector, especially given that climate change puts pressure on the availability and quality of water resources. However, Saudi Arabia is also an example of water scarcity management. By developing desalination plants, expanding water recycling processes and infrastructure, as well as moving from domestic agriculture to food outsourcing, the country is doing everything possible to provide itself with water.